The midterms happen exactly in the middle of a president's term, two years after a presidential election and two years before the next presidential election. They're a big check of the national mood. They tell people where you stand on the current administration, on the current party in power, what issues are animating people. You learn a lot from that, and that sets up the next presidential election. Every seat, all 435 seats in the United States House are up for election every two years, and about a third of the Senate is up every two years. The primaries are how both parties choose their strongest one candidate. Each state has its own laws governing the timeline, the process of getting on the ballot, so it means that the primary season begins in March and actually doesn't wrap up until September. It's one of the few times that you have the nation voting on purely local candidates and local issues. You're not talking about electing or re-electing a president. You're talking about House members, you're talking about senators, you're talking about governors, you're talking about state representatives. And it means that the candidates matter, it means that the issues matter even more. The results of the midterms make all the difference to whatever else President Biden wants to do in office. Anything he needs on his legislative agenda has to get through Congress. The problem for Democrats is that history is not on their side. Presidents almost always do poorly in their first midterm election. There's almost no exception to that rule. Losing control makes it near impossible to notch major legislative achievements, and his appointments have to go through the Senate. So that means if there's a judicial vacancy or even a Supreme Court vacancy, he doesn't necessarily get even a hearing for that person unless the party agrees to it. With the Democrats, that's easy. If the Republicans have a firm majority, it's a much different story. And control of Congress by the party out of power means investigations. If Republicans control the House or the Senate, expect to hear a lot about Hunter Biden, uh, President Biden's son, and the business relationships he's had with Russian and Ukrainian entities. Uh, expect to hear a lot about foreign policy, the circumstances around the Afghanistan withdrawal. You're going to see the, the Congress dig in on almost every element of the Biden agenda. The 2024 begins the moment that 2022 ends. Uh, you're going to have candidates announced for president probably within a few weeks of the midterm elections, and the results are going to dictate what the field looks like. People are going to be looking for how did the Democrats do and how did the Republicans do? What does that say about Biden's chances? How did Donald Trump's endorsed candidates do versus candidates that might have had the backing of other potential Republican nominees down, down the road? So this is a key barometer of where the national mood is at the middle of the term of President Biden, but it could tell us a lot about what the next presidential election looks like. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.